iPadOS 16 has been out for about two months now, and to say I have some thoughts might be an understatement. Now, just a reminder, everything at the time of recording this, it's, it's August 9th at the time of recording this, everything is still in beta. So stuff can change in the future, stuff, you know, bugs will get fixed, things like that. So I, I just have some general thoughts on iPadOS 16. This isn't an official review or walkthrough or anything like that. I'll have that in the fall when it's officially out. This video is sponsored by Anchor. Let's start off by talking about Stage Manager. Stage Manager is definitely the highlight feature of iPadOS 16, and it's definitely something I'm really excited about. And when windowing was brought to the iPad via Stage Manager, I was, I was cautiously optimistic. I've talked in the past about how I'm not a big fan of windowing on the Mac because it can get messy. You can have an unlimited amount of windows in a space covering up each other. You can have stuff hidden behind other windows and like it just can get lost to the ether. And I think iPadOS kind of solved this a little bit. So one thing when you're using Stage Manager, windows, if they're stacked on top of each other, the window behind the, the, the window that's on top kind of peeks out to a corner. It might be to the left side, might be to the right, up, down, whichever way kind of makes sense for it. So that way you, you always kind of see that a window is persistent in that space. So you can either tap on it or click on it to bring that window forward to the active area. This is, I think, an improvement over the Mac OS style windowing where stuff can just get lost in in the background. Stage Manager is an okay version one. I like that Apple is trying something different here, but there are some things that just need to be thought out a little better. And on top of that, it is still really buggy late in this beta process. Like I said at the beginning of the video, we're still in the beta process. I expect bugs. We're kind of starting to get later in the beta progress. So like, hey, those bugs should be getting cleaned up and stuff like that. Like I'm gonna be a little less forgiving as time goes on, but we're beginning of August. So it, it, it works, but it's buggy. But since this is a version one, I'm letting some stuff pass, but I do hope that Stage Manager keeps getting iterated and not and not to the point where we have to wait for iPadOS 17. Like I would like to see stuff in the point releases for iPadOS 16. For example, the other day I had a space open with a notes window and I wanted to create a new Safari window in that space. Well, I didn't have a Safari app or window in that space right now. So if I was to drag and drop Safari into that space, it would take Safari from my other space and put it in there. There really isn't a good easy way to just create a new window and put it into a space. And that's something I really want to be like that to kind of get refined. This video is sponsored by Anchor. This is the Anchor 541 USB-C hub for the M1 iPads. It plugs right into the side of your iPad. It has a USB-C port that supports up to five gigabit per second transfer speed with a 60 watt power delivery. It has a USB-A 3.0 port also with five gigabits per second transfer speed, an HDMI port that supports up to 4K, dual SD card readers, one standard and one micro. This is a great USB-C hub to keep in your travel bag. It has a really nice compact design, so it doesn't take up a lot of extra space in your bag. If you're looking for a docking station for your M1 iPad, this is the Anchor 551. This is an eight in one tablet stand. Set your iPad at the top and plug it into the docking station. It comes with a short USB-C cable to keep your cable management clean. It supports up to 100 watt pass-through charging via USB-C. It also has two SD card ports, both standard and micro. And on the back, there's an HDMI port that supports up to 4K resolution at 60 Hertz. This is great to pair with iPadOS 16, giving you full external monitor support. On the other side, there are two USB-A 3.0 ports. These have five gigabit per second transfer speeds. And there's a headphone jack as well. The stand folds at the base and the top so you can have custom viewing angles. These are excellent accessories to go alongside your M1 iPads. I'll put links in the description below to where you can get these and my thanks to Anchor for sponsoring this video. 
So like I mentioned with Stage Manager, you can have ex true external monitor support. That's not really breaking news anymore. Um, and I've really been liking it over the last couple months. It's been really nice to have my iPad right next to my monitor and be able to work side by side. Now, I've never been much of a dual monitor person. I've always preferred using a single monitor because of my ADHD. I found it to be a lot less distracting. One of the original reasons why I started working from the iPad was because it was a singular focus device and it helped me get over a, a spout of ADHD at a time of my life that was really difficult. But with the iPad, I've kind of been doing some interesting stuff with it. So I will just work from the external monitor when I'm sitting at my desk, but I'll leave my iPad on the home screen. And my home screen is just a bunch of widgets and obviously there's the dock, but the home screen portion of it is just widgets. So I can see tasks that I need to do, calendar appointments, time tracking stuff, run shortcuts, battery levels for my trackpad or headphones or, well, the iPad would be charging at that point, or parcels so I can see deliveries that are coming. This is really nice to kind of just have a dashboard of my day. But when I'm using my Mac for video editing, I still leave my iPad next to my monitor and I use universal control. Now this isn't an iPad OS 16 thing, it's an iPad OS 15 thing, but we're talking about it so I'm gonna to touch on it. And I do the same thing, I just leave a dashboard open so I can kind of just move the mouse over, you know, trigger a shortcut, start a timer, see the tasks, see my calendar events, stuff like that. It's, it's just really nice to have. The nice thing about the studio display monitor that I've been using is it's 5K, so I can fit a ton of stuff up on there it's got really it's nice big resolution works really well with the ipad but you don't have to use the studio display in fact i i wanted to like kind of for testing purposes and for another video um i actually went and got a lg 27 inch 4k monitor you can plug this into an ipad in fact i got it at best buy for 300 bucks i'll put a link in the description below to where you can get it it's a 4k monitor 60 hertz ips display has hdmi ports so you can plug game consoles into it as well it also has usb c so you only need one cable for display support and charging the ipad and since it runs at a 4K resolution, it gives me a ton of space to display apps or documents or any files that I need to look at. I did get a 1080p monitor. I found a, a 1080p monitor for $100, 24 inches. That, I, I think that's too low. I think 1080p, it's just not enough space with the way iPad OS works to really spread out your apps. The, the 4K 27 inch and obviously the 5K 27 inch, it's really nice because you have a high resolution, things are really crisp and clean and it's easy to read text, have multiple apps open. So like if I have a PDF document open, I can reference that while taking notes. Um, it's really nice and it's a lot less cramped than working off of an iPad screen. Now I got a few tips for you when it comes to using iPad OS 16. First is you need a globe key. A uh, globe key is a specialty key that is on all of the Apple keyboards, but it's not on third-party keyboards, especially not on the mechanical keyboards that I build. So what I did for my third-party keyboards is I went into settings, keyboard, hardware keyboard, modifier keys, and change the caps lock key to be the globe key. So that way I can do the keyboard shortcuts like globe F to zoom a window or um, globe tilde to jump between apps in a stage. If you are like me and you're just using center stage all the time, I, I don't turn off center stage. Center stage is an optional feature. I don't turn it off except for testing. Do yourself a favor, go into settings and then the dock settings and turn off the recent section. It'll save you an extra three spaces so you could put three more apps in the dock. Cause with center stage, you'll have the recent apps on the left-hand side. And even if you go into control center and you turn off all those recent stages, you can still push your cursor to the left and it'll reveal those stages. So I think the recent section in the dock is kind of pointless now because you could save an extra three spots and get apps that you want specifically in the dock. If you're gonna use center stage, turn on display scaling. Display scaling is a huge plus feature. Oh, I'm so excited for it. What display scaling does is it displays everything at a higher resolution. So it's not the true retina mode, but honestly, I can't tell the difference. I, I, I genuinely can't tell the difference, but you can fit so much more on the screen. And with stage manager, especially if you're using a keyboard and trackpad, like it's, it's perfect. But honestly, even when I'm just using my finger to touch on the screen, it, it works great. I did not realize how much space I was missing out on before display scaling on the iPad. 
If you're like me and you have a desk setup where you're jumping between the Mac and the iPad, one thing I will recommend is try and get everything down to a one cable setup. And what I mean by that is have some kind of hub or monitor or something that you can plug all your peripherals into, whether it's a keyboard, ethernet adapter, card readers, external drives, whatever. Have it all plug into a hub and then have one cable coming out of that, preferably a Thunderbolt cable that can plug into your iPad or your Mac. Really nice if you can do it that way. I have actually two hubs on my desk. Well, one on my desk, one under my desk. I have all the like high speed accessory stuff plugged into the back of my studio display because it has USB-C. And then underneath my desk, I have a USB-A hub stuck to the bottom of my desk that has things like my keyboard plugged into it and a couple of other like things that don't need high speed data connections. And then that USB-A hub plugs into the back of the studio display, so it keeps that one cable set up. Reference mode has been one of those features I haven't seen a lot of people talk about, but I really like it for editing photos, and I've been doing some more video editing tests on the iPad and things like that. It's nice, but it is kind of frustrating how to you have to enable it. You have to go into settings, display, go into the iPad display, and turn on reference mode. I really wish there was just a shortcut action because with the shortcut action, what I could do is I could automate it with, uh, with apps opening and closing. So I could be like, hey, when I open Lightroom, turn on reference mode. When I close Lightroom, turn off reference mode. That would be really nice. Virtual memory swap is the other big M1 iPad feature. Um, I honestly think this is going to be enabling the next generation of iPad apps. I think this along with stage manager, reference mode, all these other things that are happening, external monitor support, so pro apps can come to the iPad. I, I truly think like if you look at where the iPad has been coming from the last two years, first the M1 iPad with the mini LED display, the Thunderbolt port, the extra RAM, all that stuff. Wow, yeah, hmm, that's a that's a beefy power iPad, iPad OS 16, stage manager, external monitor support, reference mode, virtual memory swap. I think all of these things are leading to not just third-party pro apps, but hopefully Apple's pro apps like Final Cut, Logic, and maybe even a full version of Xcode. So that's kind of it for this video. Those are the thoughts that I have for iPad OS 16, a couple of months into it, some tips and tricks for you if you're out there using the beta already. Thank you all so much for watching. My thanks to Anchor for sponsoring this video. If you liked it, hit the thumbs up button, subscribe if you haven't already, and have a great day.